Welcome to 3ABN Family Worship. My name is C.A. Murray, and we welcome you to our worship time together. Whether this is being shown on a Friday evening and you are just entering into the precincts of the Sabbath, or on Saturday evening and you are getting ready for the vicissitudes of a brand new week, we welcome you to this worship experience and uh, the joys that are attendant to worshiping God on the Sabbath day and what the Sabbath does to prepare us for what the week has for us. So we welcome you and we thank you for being with us. I want to introduce you to uh, our three ABN family. Uh, my wife is not here today. She is producing and um, uh, could not be here. And I have to say the same for Lynette Hake's husband, Jorge, yes. who I think is running to and fro on the earth or preparing to do so. Indeed, he <laughs> is once more. <laughs> So we are flying solo as it were, so I put her next to me uh, on today's program. But uh, Jorge is usually with us, and uh, we miss him, do we not? We do, very Indeed much we so. do. Okay, we'll go to my far left uh, and say hello to Dee Casper. Dee, good to have you here, man. Pleasure to be here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Dee is a face we're seeing a little bit more on 3ABN. We like Dee a lot. Dee's a yeah. cool guy. <laughs> and a spiritual young man, and full of the fire and love of the Lord, and has a lot to say for the Lord. And uh, we're good, glad to have him here. Then we have Mr. and Mrs. Eric and Marilyn Durant. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Eric of the um, engineering department. Broadcast engineering. Broadcast engineering department, doing a fine job. Eric's a cool guy. We yeah. like Eric, yeah. <laughs> and Marilyn from the call center, I guess That's assistant correct. manager. Assistant yeah. manager. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And a very sweet person. And uh, you guys have been married how long? It'll be 11 years in March. In March? Mm, yeah. And we've been at 3ABN for three years, three years. this month. Amen, amen, yeah. amen. Seems like longer. It's been and a blessing. that's a good thing. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's been a blessing. Every week, Marilyn comes over because we have to do some things when we produce our Thursday night program. Uh, not as much as before, right. but, but still, uh, because they're, she's in charge of the people who are there, along with Jonathan Babb, who stay and answer the phones and do all that kind of stuff and send messages through. And we thank you for your work. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. And we yeah. thank the broadcast yeah. guys, because we couldn't do this without them. And it's, it's, it's sad, because whenever we call you, you know, it's, 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 we have a problem. We don't call just to say hi. We don't call to see how you're doing. <laughs> when, you, when your phone rings, it's going to be a problem on the other end. So he's a problem solver. And uh, we thank you. And we thank you, Lynette, because your husband has to travel an awful lot. An awful lot, especially this, this calendar year. It's yeah. just coming and coming. And that's a blessing, though, from the Lord. I mean, there, there's the, the ability to travel like that and to serve the Lord mm -hmm. as he does. Um, He's my soldier, and I keep the home lights burning. <laughs> Amen, indeed you do. And, 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 uh, and a faithful job you do with two fairly young ones. Sebastian is how old? Sebastian will be nine this year. Wow. Water has passed under the bridge. Indeed. And Noelia will be 12. And it'll be 12. Yeah, they are sneaking up on us. We won't talk about the other two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are two others yes. <laughs> who are in the room, even as we yes. speak. But um, uh, we're happy for that. And, and Dee, um, fairly new, I say fairly new to Adventism, yeah. but has come a long way really, really fast. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah I was baptized in 2010, uh, December of 2010. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. But an Arise graduate? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've been in ministry ever since. Yeah, so it's praise been, the Lord. been a privilege. And it's it's been the thing that's kept me honest, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Get them in ministry right when they get baptized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Get baptized out of the shallow end, mm -hmm. toss them in toss the deep end, man, and watch them swim. <laughs> I think that's the way to do it. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about tracing. Ellen White makes a lot of statements about tracing the hand of God. 
She says that when we look back over our lives, we ought to see, particularly if we've been walking with the Lord, a, a, a pattern mm -hmm. of, of, of divine interposition where God has inserted himself in your life. Mm -hmm. And you ought to see the tracing of the hand of God in your life. And she says that does a number of things. Um, one, when you see that God has been with you through the years, it makes you thankful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, it makes yes. you very thankful. Yeah. Two, it makes you grateful. Mm -hmm. um, three, it makes you bold. Mm -hmm. You know that God has been with you yeah. and he is going to be with you mm -hmm. like he has been with you. So it makes you bold. So you step out and you do some stuff, you know, mm -hmm. that yeah. maybe you wouldn't do if you didn't have that assurance that God is going to be with you. Because sometimes God calls us to do some things that's like, you really want me to do that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, the Lord says, yeah, yeah. and I'll yeah. be with you. We've all been. Uh, particularly, I, I, I had a, we moved into a house several years ago, and the Lord told me, go over and talk to that neighbor. And I'm like, I don't want to talk to that neighbor. Because um, first of all, he had a Confederate flag, mm. <laughs> which kind of gave me the willies. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord kept saying, you need to go and talk. And he was the nicest guy once mm -hmm. I got up the nerve. You know, so yeah. knowing that God is with you makes you bold. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes you bold. Um, it increases your faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And um, it makes you content with what you have and who you are. Yeah. Very much. So I don't have to be jealous of Eric or Dee or Lynette because, okay, you have Jesus, but I got Jesus, Jesus too. too. Amen. You know, right. Amen. Okay. He, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he never leaves Dee, he never leaves Lynette, he never leaves Eric, he never leaves Marilyn, and he also never leaves me. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to be jealous of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got everything. I don't have anything. Well, no, you got Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have all, all you need. need. Everything. Right. And you never know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you got. Yep. 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 So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, don't have to be, you don't have to be jealous of anybody. So contemplating, going back and tracing the outline of the hand of Jesus um, gives us some peace mm -hmm. and some encouragement. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at Christ in our lives. We're going to recount uh, some of these things. And then we're going to move forward and look at some things that we have in the Word of God. Um, let's go to our song. Now, we're going to sing a cappella today. Um, all of our pianists are doing other things. And that's okay because in the average home, you don't have a pianist. This is true. Or in some homes, don't have a piano. So you just sing for the Lord. You make a joyful noise. So if you hear a little something that assaults your ear, Chalk it up to a joyful noise <laughs> because we're making a joyful noise to the Lord. We are, we are singing uh, hymn 286 in the Adventist hymnal, Wonderful Words of Life. And we're going to ask Justin to hit the, the uh, note D. I'm sorry, G. There you go. And then we'll press on. Sing them over again to me, Wonderful Words of Life. Let's go. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all, wonderful words of life. Sinners list to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. And that last stanza. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life Offer pardon and peace to all Wonderful words of life Jesus only Savior Sanctify forever Beautiful words, wonderful words 
wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, they are wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Amen and amen. Amen. In looking up the word trace on last evening, I found that there are no less than 29 definitions for the word trace. And I'll run, run through some of them quickly. But while I'm doing this, I want each of you to take out your sheet of paper. We each have some paper here, and we're going to do a little exercise. We should each have a pencil. We're going to trace our hand. Okay. We're going to trace our hand. And while you're tracing, um, I'm going to read these definitions. And if while you're tracing, you hear anyone that sort of um, jumps out at you, just, just stop and make a comment on it. Um, because some of these really parallel what uh, we are doing with the Lord. And others are, are, but there are 29 different definitions. So let me uh, read and while you guys are tracing. The first definition is for trace, 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 right, there we go, not now. Trace, a surviving mark or sign or evidence of the former existence, influence, or action of some agent or event, a surviving mark or sign. And, and that there's a sort of a spiritual application to that too, mm -hmm. that um, there is this mark or sign or evidence of the existence of God in our lives. Two, a barely discernible indicator or evidence of some quantity or quality or characteristic or expression, et cetera, uh, such as a trace of anger in his tone. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can see it. And when we look at, at, at what you've traced, um, the thing about your hand is you don't see um, all of the veins and all of the uh, other things, you just see the, the outline. Mm -hmm. And it occurs to me that, you know, when, when God is leading us through things, he doesn't always fill in all the blanks. Mm -hmm. You just see the trace, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think if he filled in all the blanks, it wouldn't call for any faith. If he, if he told you everything that was going to happen, right. you wouldn't have to exercise any faith. Faith. But in, in the outline, you know that God is there mm -hmm. and you know that God is, is working. Three, an extremely small amount of some chemical component, like a trace of copper. Mm -hmm. um, four, footprints left by an animal. Five, a track left by a person or, or an animal, uh, like the trace of her skates on the ice. Mm -hmm. And that's a little closer to the spiritual application. You know, we can see the footprints of God in, in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, in meteorology or in weather, it's precipitation less than 0 0.005 inches, a trace of rain. Trace of rain. Um, seven, a trail or path, especially through some wild open territory made by the passage of people, animals, or vehicles. Um, that's, um, that's, I like that one right there uh -huh. because life is, life is a wilderness. Mm. Um, life has trials, struggles. Um, me and Marilyn, we've been through our trials and our struggles. And when you follow the Lord, he lays out that path. Mm. And when you deviate from that path is when you end up wandering off into that wilderness where you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. So I've learned through my life and, and, and with Marilyn that stay on the path. Mm -hmm. um, the word is the path. The yeah. word is the truth. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't deviate from that path, it doesn't matter what wilderness you're in. Mm -hmm. You're on God's path and you'll be just fine. Yeah. Yeah, like Abraham looking for a city. The Lord does not always tell you where the end's going to be. Mm -hmm. He says, just launch out. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was coming to 3ABN, I came for the visit, and I was convicted that I needed to leave New York after 30 years. You know, mm -hmm. you, you get comfortable with, 30, with, with the place 30 years. And um, I didn't really, I'd met Danny, and we had done a couple of things together, but I certainly didn't know anything about Southern Illinois. <laughs> and it's like, Lord, do you really want me to come here? Um, <laughs> And I set out seven fleeces, seven. Mm -hmm. uh, and I figured if, if, if the Lord will answer all seven, I said, Lord, I need all seven in order, just like I, I asked them. Mm -hmm. And um, well, the Lord gave me all seven. <laughs> <laughs> all seven. And the last one was I, that I said, Lord, I don't want to have to convince Irma. When I talked to her about it, 
I don't want to have to massage her into it. She's got to be open to it. So when I went back to New York, she said, did they offer you a job? I said, yeah, you going? I think I want to, okay. <laughs> Check. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And all seven, um, I wanted to like the people. Um, I knew I, there was going to be a cut in pay because of the, um, it wasn't denominational scale. Um, but I wanted to, I didn't want to have to come and say, well, okay, I'm going to need a couple of dollars more. I didn't want to have to dicker over pay. Mm -hmm. So I said, when, when they get the figure, I don't want the figure to assault me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, so they gave me the figure. And it didn't assault me, you know. So the Lord was really taken care of. And I had to like the, I had to like the head guy. And Dan and I clicked right away. Mm -hmm. See, we didn't yeah. have seven, we had three. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, were, we were headed to Texas. Mm. We were headed to Texas. And I prayed to the Lord because we went through some trials previously. Mm -hmm. And we were headed to Texas. I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, if there's something you want us to do, let it be known and make it direct. So I... I, I you know, I won't get confused by it. Make it known. Mm -hmm. The next morning, I saw an email from Moses Primo. Uh -huh. He said, we'd like for you to come work at 3ABN. And uh, we came out here. We took a look around. And we were still headed to Texas. Mm. Mm. And I said, Lord, um, is this really what you want us to do? And 45 minutes later, Moses Primo called on the phone. Mm. And I still resisted. <laughs> Marilyn, me, we, we resisted. And uh, about a week later... I prayed another prayer, Lord, it's West Frankfurt. There's nothing out there. If this is what you really want, let me know. Mm. And within the hour, Moses Primo called again. <laughs> the Lord that, said, let me make it plain. That, yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. that was three times, yeah. and three times is enough. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we came out here and spent a blessing ever since. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think, you know, I don't think God is in any way disturbed or upset when you say to him, Lord, I need it. I'm not that bright. I need it plain, right. you know, don't, yeah. don't suggest. I mean, I need it yeah. handwriting on the wall, <laughs> go. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's that pretty though. Sometimes it's not a matter of that we don't know, it's that we don't want to know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And my situation of coming back to Illinois was somewhat like that because where I was in Tennessee, I was a Bible worker, I was an elder um, and was teaching at a local academy. So I had everything I could want as far as the involvements and absolutely loved it. it, was having success, people were being baptized, it was the best year I'd had with my students. I just really didn't want to leave what I was doing, but mm. God made it clear to go home, but I didn't know what that looked like, because I'm from here, I'm one of the few, the few local yokels around here yeah. that wasn't a transplant, and I just wasn't so sure. Unseen Media Group were people that I knew, a good friend of mine started that ministry, the other person, not Ryan, but the other one, uh, his name's Ben, and so I thought, well, they're going back to Illinois or they're going to go establish their, their ministry in Illinois. And I just kind of had this sense that God may be leading, mm. but I just I wasn't quite ready for that. And I just kept getting this conviction, the sense that God was asking me to move in that direction. And um, I went to my cousin's funeral. Uh, my cousin committed suicide two years ago in the spring. And while I was in Atlanta, I had never seen so many Illinois license plates in my life. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were everywhere. See? They were just swarming me from every aisle. And I just kept thinking, Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. It's like, ah, duh. And so I finally committed on that drive home, fine, I'll go. Mm. But I have no idea what it's going to look like. Mm. And so I called the local pastor, Tom Ferguson, and said, hey, um, I'm coming back into the area. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing, but I just want to let you know what needs does the church have. I've done Bible work. And I just kind of put some, some things out there. And by the end of the conversation, he said, so let me get this straight. You're moving to Illinois, but you don't have a job. Like you don't have any way to provide for yourself. You have no idea what you're going to be doing. And I said, uh, yes, that's correct. And he said, well, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> and, but then I, um, I talked to Tom Mann, who was working at 3BN at the time. I said, Tom, uh, what do you think? You know the area pretty well. You've preached a lot of the churches. What do you think? He said, why don't you make a resume for me? I hadn't updated my resume in a while. I made a resume Thursday night. Friday morning, I talked to Ben and I asked Ben, what, what are your biggest needs, man? Like he called me out of the blue and I don't get to hear from Ben a lot. So it's really good to hear from him. I said, what are the biggest needs for the ministry and what can I be praying for? And one of the things he asked me was, would I be willing to be a consultant for the ministry? I said, yeah, no problem. And I'll be in the area if you need, you know, things, whatever, no problem. And I said, well, let me talk to you and Ryan. Like, I want to know what your needs are and, and better understand, because I'd network with a lot of people. Maybe mm -hmm. I can get some stuff together. And come Sunday, I talked to Ryan and Ben, and Ryan had mentioned the fact that one of their biggest needs was someone to teach their Bible classes and to do preaching and stuff for the ministry. And I thought, well, that's kind of what I do. 
Um, so in my mind, I'm not even thinking working there. I'm thinking, well, I'll, I'll live somewhere in Southern Illinois and I'll come help you out every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, you know, just, he said, let me send you a job description. Okay. He sends me a job description Monday morning, and it's literally the exact same thing as the resume I had just made for Tom Mann on Amen. Thursday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to a T, like everything. You might as well have just taken a picture of me and put that on the job description. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you got to be kidding. And I thought, well, I think my friend Jesus is up to something. <laughs> and from there, it just all kind of fell into place. And uh, yeah, so sometimes God works in ways that it's not so much that you want confirmation, but it just drops in your lap to make it abundantly clear that this is where you're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very glad that God did what he did. But at the time, I was a little more concerned, but I am glad he did what he did. <laughs> and I think, I think that the Lord does not have a problem with you saying, Lord, I want to do your will. Mm -hmm. Just, sh I'm committed, mm -hmm. I'm on board. Just show me, show me plainly. Yeah. I think that is a prayer that he'll answer. Now, since Eric and, and, and the, you, you, you gave those testimonies, tell me what uh, that has done in being able to trace God's moving in your life for your faith and your confidence in him. Mm. It wasn't, because I'd had previous experiences of faithfulness with God, I knew it was folly to play games with him with mm. this decision. Mm -hmm. I knew better. Mm -hmm. And that's why I gave him, because I thought, Lord, I know you better than that. Everywhere that you've led me in the past, you've faithfully provided for me. You've done things I never could have asked for and was far beyond what I would have asked for myself. Mm. I know better. Yeah. And I'm sorry. That was what really brought me to my knees to come back. So it's actually leading into this that I already knew from previous experiences that that would be the case. And when we've gone through financial difficulties as a ministry here, I've always known that this is where God wanted me and I'm not changing my mind mm -hmm. um, because I knew. So I think on the before and on the after side, that was something I always knew that God was so clear that this is what he wanted and he hasn't said anything else that I'm committed to being fully here until he says something else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm not looking for anything else. I'm just here. And that's kind of the way that it's worked for me. But it's been very, very good to have the previous instances of God's faithfulness that gave me that boldness that you're talking about mm -hmm. and that humility mm -hmm. to know better. Yeah. I know him better than that. And yeah. I shouldn't be running from him. And I'm sorry. Amen. And, and I'm yeah. going. Yeah. That's exactly right. So many times in my life, the Lord's come through mm. time and time again. You wonder, you look around, you say, where are you, God? Why am I going through this? The Lord comes through. Mm. Happens again and again and again. Eventually, when the Lord calls upon you directly to do something totally out of the ordinary, something that you absolutely would not do, mm -hmm. you have faith that he's not going to drop you now. Right. You've been faithful up to this point. Mm -hmm. So you step out in faith and he blesses. Mm -hmm. um, to this day, I, I'm shocked. I'm saying, how do we survive mm -hmm. on the money that we make now compared to what we used to make? We don't mm -hmm. know how we do it, mm -hmm. but we live better. We're happy. We're comfortable. The Lord has supplied our every need. We're not struggling. Um, and we stepped out in faith. Yeah. So if something were to happen in the future where the Lord said, I want you to go to Tasmania, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. we would just go. Okay, <laughs> Lord, that's what you want. That's what, you want. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Marilyn might be a bit of a challenge to, to convince her to go with me to Tasmania, but we would go and we mm -hmm. would do it. And I'm sure the Lord would bless. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say, honestly, when we came to Illinois, I thought it was Eric being called. Mm. And little did I know when Molly called and said, do you want to work? I thought, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll come and work for 3ABN. But now I realize that we weren't coming here just for Eric, but we were coming here for me. Mm -hmm. And what a blessing it has been. I feel honored and privileged that God has chosen me to work for a ministry to spread his word. Mm -hmm. Amen. And um, so... I, I see him every day and I see how he works in my life and the changes that have been made in my life as um, a faithful servant. And I, I'm just grateful for that. Like, so. like you said, CA, the Lord provides and you're for want of nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have everything that we need right now. Mm, and, and it's all because of the Lord. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. It occurs to me there, there are two things that really work and test your faith. One is sickness and the other is finances. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the rubber meets the road at health mm -hmm. or lack thereof and cash. Mm -hmm. That's what you were an engineer for a large company. You're a pilot. I mean, you've got an impressive resume. So you had to decide because uh, they're not going to pay me what 
I was making. Yeah. So we got to step down. So that's cash. You're still young enough and everybody's in good health or healthy enough, you yeah. know. So the thing is, it's, it's money. It's about money. Can we live on what we're going to make at 3ABN, which is nowhere near what I could pull down in my, you're an engineer. I mean, that's, that's, you can pocket some decent cash. And what's amazing is I defaulted back to the Bible. Yeah. I said, the children of Israel stepped out into the desert and they're saying, where's my food going to come from? Mm -hmm. It's the desert. Yeah. And the Lord supplied the manna. Mm -hmm. He supplied the water. He protected them. And because I was studious in studying the Bible prior to being called out, I knew that the Lord provided to them. Mm -hmm. And throughout the Bible, the Lord provided to the patriarchs and the prophets. He's provided to me and my wife when we went through trials. We're going to step out and we're going to go to West Frankfurt. And he's blessed. Amen. Amen. And their clothes didn't wear out. You know, yeah. close the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Major blessing, you know. Yeah. We don't have to go to Walmart every day or Dillard's or wherever we shop yeah. because the Lord's taking care of our clothes. Um, so this, this tracing of the hand of God in, in your life does fortify you. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you strength to know. Now, let's hold up our pictures. I don't know because we, I should have given you magic markers um, <laughs> to look at our hands. I don't know. Can you see this? I think it, the, 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 the tracing may be too light and I probably should have given you something a little bit heavy. But... Again, you see the outline of the hand of God, of your own hand, without the, everything being filled in. Mm -hmm. So you, you trust that this is your hand because you know the outline of it without all the, the, the filling in. Ellen White says this, and I've got a couple of readings that I want you guys to respond to. This is something we use at 3ABN a lot, but I wanted to put down the exact reference where she says, we have nothing to fear for the future mm -hmm. except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our, in our past history. We, we leave out that teaching sometimes mm -hmm. because he doesn't just lead you blindly. We talk about the leap of faith. Well, it's not a blind leap. Um, when you leap, the Lord actually tells you where you're going to land. You know, uh, he meditated the exact spot, but he tells you that the landing will be a safe one. Amen. You know, you're not going to break your kneecaps mm -hmm. or your ankles. You will <laughs> land safely. Um, so we have nothing to fear for the future except we forget where he's led us and his teaching in the past history, which presupposes, like you said, Eric, that we, we have studied the teaching so we know the teaching. That's why Bible study is so important because you don't even know the promises you have. It's like having money in the bank and, and don't have the pin. You know, right. you got to have a pin to, to access, you know, mm -hmm. your, your money. There's, there are promises there that you can claim, but you got to study to know those promises mm -hmm. so that when you get in a jam, you know the promises, you know that the Lord is with you, okay? Um, the, in Acts chapter 7, it tells the story of Abraham and uh, Stephen is recounting the history of Israel. And he mentions in verse 3 how, I guess we'll just start in verse 1, but it says, Then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran. And he said to him, Get out of your country and from your relatives and come to a land that I will show you. But the idea of come kind of implies that God is already there, mm -hmm. right? Whenever I, if I asked you to come, to come over to my house for lunch, that would imply that I know where it is and I'm going to be there. Yes. And I appreciate that about the call that God gave to Abraham because it's a land that I will show you. You don't know where, but you know that I'm there mm -hmm. and that's enough. And um, when you talk about you know, the, the teachings of the past, that, that was one that was really helpful for me too um, when walking through some of those decisions I've had to make. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I think before the Lord asks us to go, He always asks us to come. Mm -hmm. Come to me and then go. Mm -hmm. Come and learn and then go. Sit at my feet and then go. So there's always this come and go. They tend to go hand and hand. Um, got something else I want you to respond to. Ellen White says this. What lessons of humility and faith may we not learn as we trace the dealings of God with his creatures? The Lord can do but little for the children of men because they are so full of pride and vain glory. So she says to me that in, 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 in tracing the outline of the hand of God, there are many, many lessons to be learned if we get ourselves out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that's holding us back, the thing that is, is stifling our, our growth and our experience is, is, is self. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can learn so much if we open our eyes to see what God has to, 
to, uh, to do for us and do through us. You agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the, the Bible said that Satan had an eye problem. Yeah. <laughs> I this and I that. And I always think about that when I start thinking about myself before I think about others. Mm -hmm. Because I know just from the past, uh, when you get in the way of God's will is when the problems come. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you're not happy. It doesn't matter what else you're provided with through your own efforts. You're not happy until you're doing the Lord's will. Yeah. But you're not doing the Lord's will if you're serving yourself before you serve Him. Mm. 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 Yeah, the happiest I've ever been has been when I've been fully invested in the people around me. Mm -hmm. You know, as a Bible worker doing other work, that was the happiest I could ever be because I was, my whole day was based around being of service to other people. Um, and it's, that's, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, I, th I think the Lord is, is willing to fill us to capacity and we determine by our response to Him what that capacity is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're in control of, of, of how close to God you can get. Mm -hmm. um, he wants to be very, very close. And if you really want to be very, very close, that's precisely what He wants. Mm -hmm. He wants to direct your steps. He wants to give you good things. He wants to give you fruit for your labor. He wants you to have joy in your life. And that, to a great extent, is in your control. You know, if you put in the time and listen and obey and walk and pray and surrender and submit and commit, there's no limit, she says, to the usefulness of one mm -hmm. who laying self aside, you know, makes room for the work of the Holy Spirit upon, upon his heart. You can have as much Jesus as you can hold. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can expand your capacity by spending time with Him uh, and, and talking with Him. The Word is surrender. Mm -hmm. The Word indeed is surrender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the secret has always been surrender. Um, ah, here's one. The thorny path of duty becomes easier to follow when we trace His divine footsteps before us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That goes back to something we had talked about just a little bit ago. Um, the path that Christ calls us to walk is not always easy. In fact, really, it's never easy. <laughs> you know, if we're not, it's, it's not, it's possible. And um, he, he, if it were easy, I always tell Irma, I say, you know, if, if, if it's easy, you could buy it at Walmart. You know, if it's yeah. cheap, you can get it at Walmart. <laughs> right. So it's not easy because you can't get it at Walmart. Um, and we have to put up with a lot of, what was the word you used? De detritus. Detritus. Oh, detritus. <laughs> <laughs> potato, potato. Exactly. We have to put up with a lot of stuff in this life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, it means dealing with people who you'd rather not deal with. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, because the truth is everybody's not going to like you. I'll tell you a quick story. When I was pastoring in New York, in my third church, I had a woman who came to me and she said, Pastor, I need to talk with you. I said, okay. We went up to the office and she said, Pastor, for some reason, I don't like you. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, said, she said, I just, I just don't like you. I just, there's nothing about you I like. And, and, and in fact, she said, she said, when I, what, even when I think of you, I just, <laughs> oh. I just, <laughs> I, said, she said, I just, I just, I, I'm sorry. I just, I'm trying to like you, but I just, I just don't like you. I just, you haven't done anything to me. I just, oh, she went, oh, I just, I just don't like you. I just, I just, I <laughs> like you. Now, praise the Lord, I only had that happen once. <laughs> once is enough. I only had it happen once. But it did happen. So now I got to determine what my response to this woman is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, it'd be easy to say, well, I don't like you either. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You know. <laughs> so what? Nah, 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 nah. I don't like you. You don't like me. So what? Um, and yet, I, I, I said, Lord, you're going to have to, you're going to have to help me get a breakthrough with, mm -hmm. with this woman. Um, because she could not articulate anything. Um, I hadn't done anything. And she just, I don't like you. Um, and sometimes you're put in situations where you, you're dealing with people whose ways or whose approach to life is just kind of antithetical to yours. Mm -hmm. And yet the Lord says, you got to love them too. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you have to, you have to love them so well that they don't know whether you like them or not. Yeah. They assume you do because of the way you love them. Mm -hmm. um, and so before I left that church, we became pretty good friends. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we became decent friends. I, and, I, yeah. 
I like the word stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stuff. I, anytime stuff starts happening, I look at it like it's a chisel. Like it's a chisel. Uh huh. And I'm granite. Some people are wax. Some people are. <laughs> sand, some people are sandstone. Yeah. Sandstone. Yeah. I'm granite. Mm -hmm. And the chisel hurts. Yeah. yeah. But God has hidden that chisel, and it's it's shaping you. It's shaping your character. Mm -hmm. And you can look back on who you were in the beginning. You were just a rock. Mm -hmm. And now you have a form, and God is just chiseling away at you. So anytime stuff mm -hmm. happens, I say, here comes the chisel. Yeah. <laughs> here yeah. it comes. It's going to hurt, but it's shaping me to who God wants me to be. Mm -hmm. I had a similar story when I was working at Heritage Academy, and I lived on campus at that stage. And my doorbell rang, and it was in the afternoon. I was doing some studies, I think, and opened the door, and it's, it's one of the students. And their response when I opened the door was, I just have to tell you, I can't do this anymore. I hate you. Oh, wow. I hate you. I, I just can't stand you. And I said, come inside. <laughs> so I went out on my back porch and I just let her go. Just tell me everything. Mm. Like everything that's on your heart, just let it all out there. Mm. And when she laid it all out there, I could see pretty quickly that there was a big misunderstanding. Mm. And so we just kind of walked through it together. And by the end of it, she felt a lot better. And I certainly felt a lot better mm -hmm. because it was no longer, I hate you. All right. But about an hour or so after we had gone through that, um, kind of worked through it, things were fine. There was a misunderstanding on her end. I was misunderstood and we worked through it all. And by the end of the school year, she came up to me and she has a sixth love language. It's called physical force. So when mm -hmm. she showed a boy that she liked him, she'd start shoving him and punching him and mm. doing things like that. That's how she, tough country girl, you know, that's how she showed her love to people. And she kind of gave me a bit of a shove and said, you know what? You're my favorite. <laughs> and hey, we, we sat together at GYC in one of the seminars and she, she still happens to, to like me. But yeah, sometimes stuff comes against you. You just don't know what to do with it. You know, because you just think when it's that strong and that hot, you think, oh man, Lord, what's, what are you up to? Mm -hmm. But I learned a lot about communication and I learned also a lot about how first impressions matter. Mm -hmm. And the impressions that she was getting from the way in which I presented myself when I first got there, which isn't the way I would do it now, I realized I need to be more wise uh, in how I begin, you know, entering into situations. So um, God always has ways of, of taking these difficulties and, and using them as learning opportunities. When it says, you know, in his teachings, mm. it's not just the inspired writings. I think that the lessons that God wanted to teach us through the things that we went through, I think that we gain, mm -hmm. gain terrific benefits from too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said. And I think, you know, Ellen White says that every Oh, I can't remember the exact wording, but I'll, I'll sort of paraphrase. Every challenge in our life is a chance for, it's a demand for, a call for self-examination. Mm -hmm. if, if you're at odds with a person, since you cannot change them, the best thing to do is, is to say, Lord, okay, what can I do mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. to try to make the situation better? Uh, and many times the Lord will leave you in that situation because he wants you to self-examine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, Lord, I want out. Mm -hmm. And he say, no, stick in there because you can see something about yourself. Yeah. Um, and there's, and you know, so when, when you get married, um, all of us who've been married know that if you've been married more than one day, <laughs> <laughs> you know that marriage offers you many opportunities for self-examination. Indeed. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It really, and it's supposed to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, um, you can, it's fairly easy to see the, 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 the flaws in your, your partner, but um, it takes a little more introspection to see the flaws in, in you mm -hmm. um, and, and the same with your partner. So marriage does offer you the opportunity and you will find this out one day <laughs> right. that uh, you got to look at yourself. And if you're going to stay happy with another person, you realize the sun does not rise and set on you. Exactly. And, uh, that uh, this person is trying to make their way to heaven like you're trying to make your way to heaven. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you're going together hand in hand. Yes. Uh, that's the part of the growth process. I was at a, a wedding, for, it was in a wedding for some friends of mine and Dr. Ellen Parker was the one who was giving the ceremony and he said, when two become one, that one isn't you. And yeah. I realized I'll, I'll need to remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, very, that's very good. <laughs> yeah, that one is not you. Yeah. That's, that's, I like that. I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> well, the, the two becoming one. Um, let me just go through this one here from Advent Home. She's talking about parents uh, and children. Lynette, she says that we need to point out the beautiful flowers and the lofty trees in whose leaves we can trace the work uh, and love of, of God. Mm -hmm. that, in, that even in nature we see 
outline the tracings of the love of God and the yeah. work of God in our lives. So it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you spend time in nature with, with, your, with your kids and you guys get out and do stuff. I toss them out the door and follow them, yeah. <laughs> 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 Keep them busy and active. Yeah, I think we came over one day and they had just come in from a walk or someplace. Mm -hmm. Everybody's huffing and puffing and, and whatnot. <laughs> I said, well, you guys kind of power walk kind of thing. <laughs> but you can see the hand of God in nature. Mm -hmm. And um, um, there's, there's a science called fractals. Uh -huh. And fractals are, no matter how much you reduce it down, it's just as beautiful as when it started out. Yes. Mm. And there's a lot, they, scientists have found out there's a lot of fractals in nature. When you look at a leaf and you reduce it down, you reduce it down, it's just as beautiful, mm. no matter how much you reduce it down, as when you begin. And uh, God is a wonderful God. He's a creator. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's one of the things, nature was one of the things that converted me over, how you can have engineering, which is what nature is, without an engineer. Mm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a design, there must be a master designer. Amen. Um, what's a, there's a word for that? Oh, it's a teleology. There has to be sufficiency to get that done. If you have a car, a car didn't get there by itself. Right. Somebody had to put that car together. Right. You know, right. there has to be a reason for the existence of that car. Mm -hmm. So you've got a world that is complex and intricate. Somebody even more complex and more intricate, had to design that, that kind of thing. And again, in looking at the world, in tracing that, it does fortify you in, uh, in, in your belief and your understanding that God is with you. Now, I want you to take a moment and think in your minds because I'm gonna ask you to give me a testimony. And we've, we've done this a little bit before, but other than coming here, a time in your life when you saw the hand of God working and you know it was God. Uh, you've given some testimonies uh, that we've heard in worship uh, uh, in your flying experience uh, that you know is the hand of God. But do you think back, uh, Lynette, think back, um, maybe even before you came to Southern Illinois, and you've been here how long, you and Jorge? Uh, nine years. This nine years? This summer. Boy, mm -hmm. time gets, gets away. It has it been nine years. It's going to be nine years in, in June. And you guys have? Three. Three years. Three years. Three years. And we are in our 12th. We came in 2005. Mm -hmm. um, do you've been on campus? Two uh, years? August of 2015, so about a uh -huh. year and a half. A year and a half, okay. Back in the area. okay. But prior to that, um, a time in your life when you traced, you saw the out outline of the hand of God. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the flying story mm -hmm. because uh, it's, it's really the, the, the pivotal moment in my life that changed me. Mm -hmm. um, prior to this moment, I don't want to say that uh, religion was a fairy tale or mythology, but it almost was, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't really, it wasn't a firm commitment in any way, shape, or form with me. And uh, my father gave me some money to go to school, two years worth of money to go to college. And um, I ran off to California with that money because I wanted to fly airplanes. And uh, part of becoming a pilot is they, they uh, it's an FAA requirement that you go on a long cross-country flight. Mm -hmm. And I just decided that my flight was going to be from Van Nuys to, uh, to Laughlin, Nevada. And you fly out over the Mojave Desert. It's about a four and a half hour flight in a Cessna 172. Ooh, I and uh, I took off that morning, bright and clear, beautiful. We checked the weather. Everything was fine, me and the instructor. I got to uh, Laughlin, Nevada, uh, walked around the terminal a little bit, hopped back on the airplane and headed back home. Uh, got a little bit lost. And uh, I didn't know the reason why I got lost is because there was a storm, a thunderstorm building up over San Fernando Valley, which is where Van Nuys Airport's located. So I figured out where I was, you know, you turn little dials, navigational aids, figure out where I was, took up a heading for home, and uh, ran right into the thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. Now this is a new pilot, maybe 80 hours, 80, mm -hmm. 90 hours of flight experience, uh, flying by myself, flying into a thunderstorm, uh, approaching the airport, I remember ducking down. I kept reducing altitude because I had to stay below the cloud tops and the cloud tops kept coming down. So I'm flying between two mountains and the cloud top into the valley and uh, the wind shear was horrible. Mm -hmm. Up drafts, down drafts, wind shear, trying to flip my airplane up and down for about 15 minutes. I'm just fighting with this airplane. Mm. I'm not praying yet because I'm not really that much of a believer at this point. And uh, I call up the airport, tell them where I'm at. Um, they basically say, are you sure you want to land here? We have airplanes trying to land, big jets, they can't land, are you sure? I look at my fuel gauge, my fuel gauge is in the red because I was lost for a while, mm -hmm. uh, which means I have about 20, 25 minutes worth of fuel. And Van Nuys is in the mountains, there's mountains all around. Got to land at this airport, um, 
I turned base the final. Um, wind shear was just the worst I've ever been. I flew four and a half years after that commercially. Never been in such horrible turbulence before in my life. Mm -hmm. Probably because I was flying a really small mm -hmm. airplane. That was probably part of the, it was a factor. Um, I turned final, try and line up with the runway. Not lining up very well. Um, going up and down and way up. I said, Lord, please help me land this airplane. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the last syllable came out of my mouth, the air went completely and totally <laughs> quiet. Mm. It was like a dead calm, an unusual, yeah. shouldn't be this calm. Mm. It just happened. Landed the airplane, could have landed it with two fingers on, on the yoke. That's a good and story. My whole flight school came out, the whole flight school came out, and they said, uh, we heard you on the radio coming in, and uh, we wanted to see you land. I figured they wanted to see me crash. crash. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my instructor was very unhappy, said you should have diverted to another airport. Um, and like I said in my testimony, I never told anybody who landed that airplane for me. Mm. And it was the Lord. Amen. And after that point, I knew that there was a God. Mm -hmm. I just had to get to know him. Mm -hmm. And this was 89, 90, 1990. Wow. So it was a long time ago. And uh, it took me a while to find the Lord and the Sabbath truth. But once I found it, I found it, got baptized. And uh, it's been a blessing ever since. Wow. God, God is real. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, whenever I have, you know, if, if someone were to ask me, how do you know God is real? My response would be two words, mm -hmm. sit down. Because <laughs> I'm going to start talking. I'm just going to start telling stories. Like, that's just it. Like, my experience is not just an academic venture. Mine is primarily an experiential venture of the faithfulness of God from mm -hmm. stem to stern in my experience. I, I moved to Tennessee and didn't have a vehicle. And... Um, this little girl, uh, I'll try to make this as brief as I can, but there's a little girl who was a staff kid at Heritage Academy. And I rode my bike over to their other side of the gorge where they were located, and she said, Mr. D, how come you don't have a car? I said, well, sweetie, I don't have enough money. Cars cost money, I just don't, don't have enough. She was like six at this stage. And this story is on the 100 Days of Prayer website, the full story. But um, so she, 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 I have something for you. And she goes to her room and she comes back with a cup full of markers and a piece of paper like this. And she starts drawing in some mysterious object and she folds it and hands it to me and says, here, I want to give this to you. I said, well, thank you, Anna. And I go home and I open it and inside is 26 cents. Oh. This oh. girl is fully That's convinced sweet. of the fact that Mr. D needs money for a car and I have money. And she thought that would be enough to buy a car. Yeah. And so I post that story on Facebook because that's what you're supposed to do when kids do cute things. <laughs> and a school teacher for a local church school that I wasn't attending that church, but I preached there a couple of times, saw it and wanted to do something, but then forgot. And some time goes by, I do a week of prayer at this particular grade school. And she wasn't there the first part of the week because she, uh, her, one of her children had just had a, a baby. So she had a new grandkid. She was going to go see her kid. So she comes uh, on Friday and she said, she came to me and said, you don't have a car? I said, no, ma'am, I don't. And uh, she said, well, look, someone gave me this car and uh, my son-in-law gave me his car. And so I, I don't know what's wrong with it. It won't start. It took it to Dollar General and it just wouldn't start. Uh, I don't know if it needs an alternator or whatever, but you can just have it. If you want to sell it, if you want to fix it and drive it, do whatever you want. I said, really? And she said, yeah, you can just have it because someone gave it to me and I just want to give it to you. And I thought, wow. Mm. A friend of mine, so I go to near the Atlanta area where my mom is for the weekend around Thanksgiving time. And while I'm there, uh, the mechanic for the school calls and says, hey, D. I said, yeah. He says, God has really blessed you. I said, why is that, Jay? And he said, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this car. It said all it is is that the two there's two cables that come together and go over the positive terminal and the battery. Mm -hmm. They just seem to be flux and soldered. It'll cost you like six dollars. Uh, <laughs> and it says it has a new alternator in it. The tires are new. The brakes are in great shape. There's nothing wrong with this car. And I use that car for two uh, for two years, I think, for the time that I had it. And it, it went everywhere I wanted it to go. It went never had an issue. It was fuel efficient. Got to see family. It did ministry with it. And because I had that, I was able to do Bible work in Tennessee. Mm. And I was able to give that car away twice um, oh, wow. <laughs> since then. And God's provided me something far better than I could ever deserve. Um, but just the kindness. And, and that girl prayed. She didn't just give a car. She prayed. And when that little girl prays, she gets answers. Mm. She's 10 now. And she cried when she saw the new car that uh, was afforded and answered a prayer. But Praise God. stories like that of the faithfulness of God to provide the needs I didn't even know I had yet because I didn't know I'd be a Bible worker then. Mm -hmm. But that car was the reason why I could be a Bible worker worker and it's because of her benevolence. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've seen tens of thousands of dollars worth of financial miracles. And so when I get into financial straits, I've come to realize, you know what, I, I know him well enough. 
he's he's going to provide somehow, and he always does. Mm -hmm. He does. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Praise God. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Does that anything pop up in your mind? Um, kind of. Uh, I was praying on the way here, um, and was thinking, you know, Lord, I'm not a mover and a shaker. I'm not a powerhouse that people know. Nobody knows my name. I'm just behind the scenes. Can I trace your hand in my life? Which was a really dumb question to ask God. <laughs> um, but I guess what I want to put out there is that even if you're doing what I'm doing, and I'm doing it for the second time in my life, I had two younger kids, one of whom is behind one of these cameras, the other one's in the booth, um, went to work for a brief while and had a career, and then had my second set of kids, and yeah. I'm home with them again. I'm a dinosaur again. I'm a stay-home mom. <clears throat> and it's, it's um, sometimes hard for young mothers, especially when they're sitting there surrounded by the detritus of childhood, as mm -hmm. it were, um, to realize that God's hand is still on your life. Mm -hmm. And I know I, c I can look back and see who I was when I first became a Christian as a young 15-year-old bubblehead to see where I am now. It's like, I am not the same person. And God has brought me through many things, even if it's just subtle, it's like a quiet storm almost, mm -hmm. just going through these things and realizing that God is slowly molding me. It's okay, I haven't left you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you're doing a very traditional role, which is frowned upon in today's society. And it's easy to discount myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but God is very much evident in my life Amen. Uh, from start to finish at this point. Praise um, the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's just amazing. Yeah, and this, this second set, you're doing a great job with us. <laughs> Praise yeah, God, it's all the Lord because it ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> well, quickly, and, and it, uh, just a couple of things. I, when I had the, the six bypass surgery a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. but years ago I was pastoring and um, I was teaching about faith and trusting God. And uh, one of my members called me to the house Sabbath afternoon. And um, she said, Pastor, I need you to pray for my daughter. Uh, I said, okay, fine, until I went in and saw the girl. And mm -hmm. I mean, she looked one step away from death. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think you need to take her to the hospital. She said, no, no, you, you pray and she'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, I'll pray, but then let's get in the car and take <laughs> this girl to the hospital because she, her breathing was very shallow. She had no color in the skin and just lying, just, just mm -hmm. out. And so, um, I said, let's pray and then go. She said, no, Pastor, you just pray and she'll be fine. That's a lot of pressure uh, on me and, well, it's not on God, but it's, yeah. it's just, she's filtering this through me. And I'm saying, okay, I'm going to pray, but, but we need to go. And she said, no, no, you pray. She'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So you talk about pray. Mm. It's like, Lord, please, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because she's not going to take it. You got to work something out here. And so I, I, prayed. I, I don't know how long we prayed. And then I, I encouraged her. Um, I'm going to the church and I'm just going to stay in the church in the afternoon. It's walking distance. She's right on the corner from the church. And um, you let me know if anything happens and I'm, I'm ready to go to the hospital mm -hmm. right away. Father's out of the home. She's a single mother, older son, this younger daughter, <clears throat> I guess about 14. Uh, and she didn't have transportation. So I said, I'll be right there. Call the church. I'm, you know, I'm right there. And I'm at church praying and just an hour, hour and a half goes by. It's between worship service and, and what we call AY meeting at the time, MV meeting, you know, afternoon service. So I'm just sitting there. I want to go home. I'm just kind of sitting and rocking. This was before I was even married. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen because the girl looks so bad. About two hours later, uh, the mother bursts in the door with her daughter in tow. Uh, and she says, you never guess once you left everything changed. And she had this plastic bag with her. And she says, my daughter threw this up. Oh. And she opened this bag and this stuff ran all over my desk. Oh, no. And in it was this black thing, like a black rope, like a thick black rope. It looks like a, like a snake about maybe that long. Mm -hmm. And she says, she brought this up and it smelled awful. And I was like, oh, pray uh, the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and she was so happy, so excited. And I said, I just, I thanked the Lord all that evening. I said, because I really thought 
yeah. that girl was going to die that mm. night because she looked like it. And I, I saw the hand of God. It strengthened the mother's faith. Mm. It strengthened the older son's faith. And she had a sister who was not attending church, who began attending church. Mm. So this was not just for me. There were a lot of layers to this, you know, a lot of nuance to the story. And a lot of people were impressed to come to the Lord through, mm. through that experience. But uh, man, it, it really, it kind of stretched me a little bit because I really thought we were going to have some problems. But she believed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes the Lord will strengthen your faith through somebody else's yeah, That's right. somebody else's faith. And you know what's uh, wonderful, CA? With mm -hmm. each experience, you love the Lord even more. Yes, it yes. just works out that way. With mm -hmm. each experience, you glow. Yeah, you know, with love. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we don't want to pray for trials and tribulations, <laughs> but uh, you come out better on the other side mm -hmm. if you keep your eyes on Him. Yeah. Well said, well said. And 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 so I go back to our, our 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 initial list that when you trace the hand of God in your life, it makes you thankful. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, it makes you grateful. Yeah, it does. It makes you bolder mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in, in him. You know, he got me this far. I know he can get me home. As you well said, uh, I know that, that Cessna 142. There is a smaller Cessna, the 150, which is a two-seater. It was a 172, but yeah. it's, it's an aluminum kite. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. I said, oh, I know that plane. <laughs> yeah, that smashes up real good. You know, the Lord, the Lord bless you. Um, it, it, it increases your faith. It makes you content, mm -hmm. you know, all of your experiences, your experience, D, your experience, your experience, um, they're, they're, they're personal affirmations of God's love for you. Mm -hmm. So that when you are called to go forward in the future, as you well said, if I got to go to Tasmania or Tanzania or East Cucamonga, uh, I'll go <laughs> because God got me to West Frankfurt. <laughs> you know, so he can get me through. He can find me in East Cucamonga just like he found me in, in West Frankfurt. Praise the Lord. Um, so it makes you bold for the Lord. Um, and as, as she well said, it makes the thorny path of duty easier to follow because you know you've got things to do, but you can do so because you have the assurance that the same God who has gotten you this far mm -hmm. will get you all the way home. Mm -hmm. So when you're in doubt, trace the hand of God in your life. It will give you strength and confidence that God will see you through. Bye-bye and God bless. Mm -hmm.